Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully having an amazing day. There's been an awful lot of very interesting RDNA free information that's popped up over the past day or so, along with several other rumors. In today's video, we're going to focus on some interesting benchmarks from AMD themselves and a couple of other intriguing pieces of technology, not least of which is HyperX. And then in a video in the next couple of days, I'm going to delve much deeper into the architecture of RDNA free. So there's a lot of stuff to get through with these slides. I will leave a link to them in the description of the video if you want to go ahead and peruse them at your own leisure but again i will be going much deeper into this stuff over the next couple of days i'm actually writing the script right now speaking of just a quick explanation of what's been going on the channel and the reason that it's audio only yet again today basically i am doing a lot of let's say revamping or to the filming area and all the other stuff and of, as many of you know i also traveled to germany i really don't like not doing camera i think it's much more personal and honestly as i mentioned on twitter uh, a couple of days ago actually i really miss you guys it's just it's not the same not being on camera i like you know the quote unquote personal aspect of it and uh yeah so i'm really hoping to get back to my level of normal anyway as normal as i can possibly be as soon as possible but again i'll discuss this a lot more uh, in depth in the next you know probably week or so uh, i'll probably make a vlog and explain what's been going on there's no there's no need to be concerned there's nothing bad happening it's just stuff you know and uh, again i'll explain it pretty soon i just don't want to eat up tons of video time uh, explaining it all because it's <laughs> it'll take a while to explain anywho um not as i said normal service will resume with camera and everything else albeit it'll look a little different and you'll see what i mean anyhow let's talk about the rx 7000 series shall we it seems like a great idea so amd have released a plethora of slides and information since their event where they of course unveiled the cards so in case you missed the event i'm sure most of you know this already but i'll very briefly go over it the 7900 xt and the 7900 xtx both relief in both release excuse me and essentially a month from now costing 899 and 999 respectively according to amd it's breakthrough performance featuring 84 and 96 compute units respectively you'll also notice the number of stream processors and if we look at the number 6144 it's exactly half of what many are reporting the number of uh, stream processors to be inside the cards now i'm going to go much deeper into this in a separate video uh, detailing the architecture because uh, quite honestly it would involve me talking about the compute units and what amd have done um, because they are substantially changed actually over rdna3 but um, I'm just going to say in this video, it really depends on your perspective on how you count the number of stream processors. Um, AMD are using the figure 6144. I personally feel, and many others are saying the same thing, that it's 12,000. I think even AMD themselves have interchangeably used 12,000 as well, but I may be misinformed on that, so if I'm wrong, I apologize. As for the game and boost clock, you can see that they are slightly higher than the previous generation. More on that in a moment. Infinity Cache, all of that stuff is exactly what we've heard previously. And the total board power comes out just a shade higher than the RTX 4080. There is also a PCB image as well. This looks staggeringly like what Igor's lab leaked a while ago. There's not too much to say here. There's a 20 high efficiency power stage design, so 20 phases basically. Uh, they are stating things like premium materials, um, advanced GPU chiplet, obviously there's a single GCD and there's six MCDs. Um, that number is reduced for the MCDs on the 7900 XT because it has a lower um, bus, um, memory bus. It's only 320 bit as you saw in the specifications earlier, as well as the infinity cache being reduced. So basically the GCD is where all of the uh, smart stuff happens so to speak it's got all of the stream processors it's got the rops it's got the tmus the ray tracing it's got all the media capabilities all of that stuff resides on the die and of course amd are very happy to point out features like display port uh, display port wow i really cannot speak today display port 2.1 um usb type c and hdmi 
2.1a. So basically speaking, the board and the size of the card, at least in reference form, is essentially identical to the previous generation flagship cards from the company, albeit ever so slightly larger. Personally speaking, I'm kind of a fan of the reference Radeon cards. Um, let me know down below if you prefer the reference AMD or Nvidia. Personally, I like both. The only negative of, of course, the RTX 40 series is that, well, the cards are kind of big when we're talking about the reference, not that the AIB models are exactly small and dainty. And I actually quite like the reference uh, ARC cards as well. I think they look kind of cool. That's just my personal opinion. And AMD, of course, does make a really big deal of the size of the GPUs and that type of thing. But this is where things get a lot more interesting. So breakthrough performance. Now, they are actually counting this against the 6950XT. Depending on the benchmark, that's roughly 10 to 15% faster than the 6900XT. So basically speaking, we are looking at up to 82% more performance in ray tracing over the 6950XT. They show uh, several games, uh, Resident Evil Village, Dying Light 2, Cyberpunk, and Hitman 3. Cyberpunk looks absolutely tremendous with uh, hardware-based ray tracing enabled, of course. Now, it's worth noting that there are a lot of changes in terms of how uh, AMD are handling ray tracing with RDNA 3. Again, I'll go in more into this in the, um, in the architecture overview thing, which I'm putting together pretty soon. But while RDNA 2 does have stuff like ray triangle intersection testing, it doesn't have dedicated uh, means to basically do BVH tra uh, traversal, whereas RDNA 3 fixes this. It's going to be very interesting to see how all of that evolves over the next while. Obviously, at the end of the day, I suspect developers will you know, get more out of RDNA 3 when they start getting used to the hardware, drivers mature, optimizations start to be you know, incorporated. But right now, these are the slides we get. As for rasterization performance, well, let's take a look at, for example, Watch Dogs Legion. 68 FPS versus 100 FPS. Resident Evil Village, 124 FPS up to 190 FPS. Again, this possibly would improve with um, optimization, but those are the numbers that we have currently. And what's very interesting, and I just want to mention this because I, you know, I wasn't actually going to save this for the previous, so for the next video, but I really want to mention this, guys, because I find it extremely interesting. You can see uh, a chiplet summary, and performance per watt is increased by around by up to 54%, which is really nice. Um, but AMD also, uh, of course, mentioned things like massive 5.3 terabytes per second of bandwidth with innovative. Infinity Links on high performance fan out. Basically speaking, they have really done a good job here with the interconnects. They are considerably smaller and a lot more densely packed than what they have achieved with Zen. This is one of the reasons for this, essentially, is that when you're talking about GPUs, because bandwidth requirements and everything else go through the stratosphere, you need that, that many more interconnects or wires if you want to keep things really simple. So because of this, you need high density because obviously, you know, not only is density really important just for, well, size reasons, but you also have other things to take into consideration, not least of which things like power consumption. But also we look at increased frequency. RDNA 3 is also built for significantly increased frequency, approximately 30% improvement in STA, Compared to RDNA 2, a key contributing factor to RDNA 3 performance and power improvements over RDNA 2. Now, AMD have already confirmed that the architecture is designed to scale up to 3 gigahertz. Again, I'm still hearing that the original targets were not hit. I'm still hearing that it was supposed to be over 3 gigahertz, but there were, there were issues, basically, with design. I've heard multiple explanations as to the reason, so I don't know. It's possible that it's BS, but a couple of the sources who have told me this were right on literally everything else. So I'm kind of willing to give them the benefit of the doubt, especially with given AMD's own marketing materials. Not that it matters. At the end of the day, even if a leak or information is meant to be accurate or was accurate, it's not the released product, so it doesn't particularly matter. And I still feel that RDNA 3 is really impressive, particularly for the price. Second point, um, I think RDNA 3 is significantly different from RDNA 2, obviously, but you can kind of feel like it's a building block for the future. And AMD have had to bite the bullet, of course, with the chiplet technology. 
NVIDIA are going to obviously have to do it at some point or another as well because there's things like reticle limit uh, and obviously the bigger the GPU that you're, or CPU or whatever you're producing at the end of the day something has to give you know even if in a theoretical world there wasn't a size limit and a cost limit it's just it, it becomes unwieldy like at one point or another and you also get so much more flexibility um, of course, from chiplets anyway, you can kind of mix and match, which is really handy for IP. So now um, let's talk about HyperRx. Let's hyper without the E, of course. It's performance made easy. So this is essentially gaming optimization with a single click, which I'm all for. This is not something I think that would appeal to the majority of my audience. Let me know if you feel differently. I think most of you guys are kind of hardcore into this stuff. But it is nice if you just want a really simple... I don't, I don't like to say it, but consoleized solution where you just don't have to think. You just press a couple of click, as I click just a couple of times and it's done. But what this essentially does is enable things like anti-lag. Uh, we will also see other things as well, like Radeon Super Resolution Technologies, RSR, which is basically a spatial upscaler. That's not ideal because it's based on FSR1 to my, uh, to my memory, but it is pretty impressive. Um, I think that ultimately you'll get better quality and visual uh, you know visual fidelity if you were to optimize it yourself but according to what amd have managed to achieve here uh, this is some early uh, performance data and they were using a 7900x ddr5 system uh, the game was configured to 1080p this is with dying light 2 and output resolution was uh, 1440p and uh, basically speaking you can see that the results are pretty impressive 166 fps now again this is not some ultra new technology they're not like this is not um you know them creating new technology from from nowhere this is essentially a, an amalgamation a combination of a plethora of their technology and it's again in my personal opinion i think it's cool it's not something i personally would use on a day-to-day -day basis but if you're someone who just wants to just click and play and you know enjoy games then it's perfect i have a number of friends they don't really know you know what dlss is they don't know what quality settings to choose they don't know what anti-aliasing really does or any of that stuff all they know is that they want their game to play at a specific frame rate to feel good and that's it and i think for people like that these types of um these types of options are really cool but I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do because, well, it's YouTube. I'll see you soon, guys. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.